Recently, the word cashless has become a frequently used one by Nigerians in everyday conversations. The reason is not far-fetched, as the Central Bank of Nigeria in January began the implementation of its cash withdrawal limit to reduce the amount of physical cash circulating in the economy and to encourage more electronic-based transactions for payments of goods, services, transfers and others. You will recall that the CBN cashless policy was initiated 11 years ago when the pilot was run in Lagos State from January 2012, while Rivers, Anambra, Abia, Kano and Ogun State and the Federal Capital Territory followed suit in July 2013. Specific aspects of the policy was applied back then. A lot has been said concerning benefits of the cashless policy and the Central Bank of Nigeria is now asking citizens to make use of alternative payment options available in the country for their daily transactions as much as possible, rather than exchanging physical cash. We'll speak further on this issue with an expert in today's episode, but that's after this short break. Stay with us. Oh, oh, I see. Uh, just hold on in that case. Let me call out my pin. Uh, it is four... One... Uncle, please stop. Stop what? You're giving someone else your personal identification number pin? Oh, uh, not someone else. Uh, it's from my bank. Please hang up, Uncle. That's a fraud star. Th th that's not true. But, but they call out my full name. I am sure this is from my bank. Uncle, no bank is ever going to call you to ask for your personal identification number pin, your mobile banking password or your card verification code, CVC. But it sounded so genuine. Yes, hackers and fraudsters always sound genuine. But please, uncle, don't fall for their bait. Don't respond to any phony emails, text message, SMS, and don't click on any link you're not sure of. Even if they call your date of birth or your BVN, don't give them your security details. If you suspect any issue with your account, please go to your bank. Oh, I see. This message is from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Bank of Nigeria says its cashless policy aims at reducing the amount of Naira banknotes and coins in circulation and not to eliminate physical cash. The policy is expected to, among other reasons, reduce the cost of banking services and drive financial inclusion by providing more efficient transaction options and greater reach. It will also help improve the effectiveness of monetary policy in managing inflation and drive economic growth. Earlier, I spoke with the director, CBN Trade and Exchange Department, Dr. Ozomina Naji, on the alternative payment channels available to Nigerians in this cashless economy. Dr. Ozomena Naji, the director, CBN Trade and Exchange Department, it's a pleasure to have you on the program today. Pleasure is mine. Thank you for having me. Now, as the implementation of the cashless policy of the Central Bank of Nigeria progresses, the CBN has urged Nigerians uh, to embrace alternative payment channels. Can you shed more light on this payment channels options that the CBN is talking about? Well, thank you, Yenisi, for that question. And thank you for having me today. Um, yes. The practice the world over is that uh, uh, alternative payment option uh, is becoming a norm and that use of cash is uh, diminishing all over the world. So um, luckily, our banks have keyed into these alternative plan, uh, payment channels uh, like payment transfer. Uh, we have one of the best payment systems in the world. You can transfer money and within minutes, the next person gets it. Um, and we, we have um, uh, bank channels, we have fintech channels, we have um, all the other service providers that can um, transfer money on an instant from one account to the other. We also have the use of ATMs, uh, POS, 
um, and, and, and even our e-Naira, our digital currency, um, anybody can get a wallet on e-Naira and use that as a form of payment, uh, whether it is in a shop, in a store, in a transport system, or even in the railroad system. Um, and we're working so hard to ensure that we have many areas that accept e-Naira, especially in our uh, paid transportation uh, space. So e-Naira is a veritable payment system that people can use. And we hope that people embrace uh, this alternative payment system, uh, including e-Naira. It's very nice to say that we have one of the most sophisticated uh, payment system in the country. Now, online banking, ATM, USS code, as you have mentioned, including uh, bank apps, POS, and et cetera, all those channels are beset with peculiar challenges. What has been done uh, to surmount the challenges, one, by the bankers committee, and secondly, by the CBN as a regulator? Um, a lot is being done. Uh, we find out that during the narrative design, a lot of people are uh, plugged into the um, alternative payment channels. And we did notice that the channels were a bit overloaded. But we have learned from that, and the banks are working on expanding the infrastructure to make sure that we have the capacity to bring more people into the system. Um, we're really, really working hard at it. The bankers committee are committed to expanding the infrastructure. The central bank on its own is working hard to ensure that we have an infrastructure that, that can accommodate as many people as want to be plugged on the system with, with zero downtime and zero failures. That's our goal. And we're working very, very hard at it. I think the uh, Naira redesign um, exposed us to the limitations of the current system that we have. Even though it's fast, uh, it needed some improvement to accommodate as many people as we want to be in the system. So that is being worked on. And uh, as I speak now, um, you can testify if you're using the channel that the rate of failure has been uh, reduced and the rate of um, um, non-responsiveness has been reduced. Um, so we're really, really working hard at it because we think that that's the way to go for going forward, both for our monetary policy uh, efficacy and also for um, a, a robust economy that is based on um, transaction that can be traceable, transaction that um, that uh, can promote business and business environment. Okay, I want us now to uh, dwell more on e naira. Uh, the e-Naira uh, central bank digital currency, which was introduced over a year ago, uh, for such a time as this, when uh, people will be asked to go cashless. Now, let us let us know what is the current status of e-Naira in terms of usage and volume of transactions. Um. I think the e era has, um, the volume has expanded since we started. When we started, people were slow to adopting e era, uh, to using e era, and to even understanding what e era is. e era is just as good as cash in your hand, but it's just in your wallet, in your, in your uh, digital wallet. Instead of carrying it in your purse, the money is in your digital wallet. And it's as good as your fiat currency. It's as good as your fiscal naira you're holding in your hand. It's just uh, your bank account. It's just that this one is in your wallet. Mm. And um, we've been able to convince people, and people have seen that the system, the naira system, is very user friendly, uh, very good, and um, is very um, readily available. What we're working now, working on now, is expanding it to more um, businesses that will accept e era That has the wallet that will we can also go to shop and shop on it. We are plugged into the Shoprite um, uh, system. We can go to Shoprite and spend e era now. Uh, we have some of our hotels. We have some of the, our airline that are accepting e era as a mode of payment. 
So the, the usage of e-Naira has expanded tremendously from the time we launched it in 2021. But we, we still think that there's room for uh, further improvements. And that's why we're working hard to ensure that people understand the workings of this uh, system, showing people how the system works, that is very user-friendly, easy to use, easy to uh, um, track your spending, and you can see where your money is going to. So eNara is a, a good payment system, good alternative for people to log into. We even have some Kekena Pep um, uh, Association that is now plugged to eNara. So you just take your phone, and you're stuck into your phone and your money is deducted. The person has his money, your money, you don't have one to worry about change. Whether you have 50 naira, 100 naira, or 10 naira change, you don't have to worry about it because the exact fare will be deducted from your wallet. Okay, still talking about e naira. The star 997 ash uh, USSD code was introduced last year for easy onboarding of the unbanked and for those places where there may be no internet services. And earlier this year, another layer was added. That is the star 997 star 50 ash. Uh, it was added to it for improved services. In the meantime, the eNera speed wallet is still up and running. How can eNera further help to facilitate trade, both locally and internationally across border? Well, um, we are working on um, on um, having in area be used for cross border payments, both in payment of goods and services, and also for remittance um, transfers. Um, the star uh, nine seven nine nine uh, was introduced for people that have future phones that don't have um, Android phone. I don't have internet. You can still use Inara wherever you are, whether you're in the village or in the city, or whether you're in a place where there's no no uh, internet access. And um, our goal is to have Inara be extended to both uh, international trade and international payment. We're working on it uh, because this thing requires both um, a diplomatic and political um, uh, engagement with other countries. There's a, a committee of um, uh, CBDC countries that are working on how do we integrate CBDCs, uh, digital central bank digital currency, currency. across the African <laughs> continent. And um, also, to, uh, especially given the uh, African Free Intercontinental Trade Agreement, INARA will be a veritable tool for uh, trade within Africa if we can get the uh, African central banks to plug into um, digital currency or plug into the in era um, so that trade between um, citizens of these African countries can happen on the in era platform. Uh, so that is being on the, on the pipeline and it's something that we think will be uh, a good win-win for in era for Nigeria and for Africa in general. It's good to know that uh, all these things are happening and uh... There is so much coming up regarding eNaira. But even locally, let's talk about a collaboration that uh, the CBN has with the Association of uh, Northern Agriculture and Allied Commodities Practitioner, ANACOP. Recently, they unveiled the Agro eNaira wallet, targeting 5 million farmers in Northern Nigeria. Is there any plan to replicate this in other parts of the country? Yes, uh, there are plans. Uh, maybe not farmers uh, in, in all the region. Uh, there are plans to replicate it with transportation um, associations, with uh, schools, um, with um, unions, and uh, with the other um, other associations. Even with state state governments, there are plans to replicate it. Uh, we're, we're working with NYSC uh, that we have have them uh, plugged in to be paid in stipends in in era and uh, we're working with the uh, humanitarian services to have um transfers to be made to people in in era so that you actually are sure that the beneficiary of this money are legitimate and that they're the ones getting the funds meant for them that is not being transferred in another third party 
accounts that can now use the money intended for a beneficiary. So uh, a lot of engagement is going on, a lot of outreach is going on, and uh, we have had so many successes, and we hope we have better successes that but if I'm talking to you next year by this time, you will say that in era is like another um, currency in Nigeria that everybody now knows and everybody knows. Okay. Let's talk about AFRIGO, uh, the CBN National Domestic Cat Scheme, another payment option for online and offline transactions within Nigeria. Tell us more about the card and its benefits. AFRIGO is Nigerian authentic uh, card issued by Nigerians and owned by Nigeria. Uh, what he's telling us is that we um, can now do it and we can manage our own issue our own cards that is purely Nigeria. Uh, uh, what it means is that we don't have to pay um, charges or card charges or things in foreign exchange. We can conserve some of the foreign exchange we have uh, because some of these um, foreign card issuers, when you use your card, you have to pay cushions and then you have to pay to remit money out of the country. It means that those people can stay in this country, create job and opportunities for learning and for um, infrastructure development for Nigeria. So it's a good thing, uh, Nigerian owned, Nigerian initiated, and Nigerian managed. All right, we'll leave it there for now. Dr. Ozomina Naji, the Director, CBN Trade and Exchange Department. Many thanks for your time and your insights. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for staying tuned. This is from the CBN, a weekly program that brings to you reports and expert analysis of the actions, policies, events, and economic initiatives of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN. Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin Emefiele, was at a two-day African Central Bank Conference 2023 in Johannesburg, South Africa, where he advised other central bankers, as well as other financial sector regulators to be more vigilant in their regulatory and supervisory roles to forestall any run on banks in their jurisdictions. Here's an excerpt from the conference. During the pre-COVID era, we saw interest rates at low levels, we saw monetary policy accommodation, and as a result of that, um, banks um, like Silicon Valley that were in a long period of low interest rate regime began to invest because in their portfolios, I'm not sure we saw large loans there, began to invest short-term funds, depositors funds, in long-term investments. And because monetary policy became tight and unaccommodative, um, they began to see some losses in there are mark-to-market um, issues and um, there of course interest rates also went up because interest rates went up depositors who needed to also um, uh, access liquidity to meet interest rate uh, or lending uh, interest rate payment obligations of course started to withdraw money in the course of withdrawing their monies svb svb started to liquidate some of those investments and of course got to a point where he could no longer, he could no longer meet those um, deposit obligations. And that's where we are, why we are where we are today. So the big question to the central banker is, we know why banks collapse and how come monetary authorities have not taken the pain to take regulatory measures to avoid um, these kind of situations. A major reason that, that contribute to bank failures is when the bank is unable to meet its depositors' demand or deposit obligations for their monies. This usually results in a run. The South African Reserve Bank governor did talk about run has been a 
what we call it, lifelong or decade-long discussions in central in the midst of central bankers about what happens. But the problem is that central bankers do we really take actions, regulatory actions that should mitigate, not entirely eliminate runs, at least reduce the incidence of runs in our banking systems so as to reduce uh, some of the systemic crisis that we see. So if a bank collapses due to a run, why is it difficult for regulators to put in place regulations that will uh, insulate the banking system from bank collapse? In 2008, when we saw the subprime crisis and the mortgage in 2008, that was the period when we saw Lehman Brothers, Bear Stands, Washington Mutual came down. In fact, we we're beginning to see that um, the risk of that contagion was beginning to get even the likes of Bank of America, the Citibank, uh, the Wells Fargo banks, and the rest of them until the Obama administration came up to begin to give them money uh, for them to um, uh, run their operations. And luckily, within a couple of years, they were able to get out of those problems and they paid back those monies. Then in 2008, I was still the CEO of Zenith Bank. And I took time to look at the balance sheet of Citibank, I think Citibank London. In that balance sheet, and if you can go through the, if you, even if you Google and you, you check the five-year summary, of Citibank London, you will find there that deposit in 2008, in 2008 was just about $774 billion. In 2007, it was slightly lower than that. Loans plus trading assets in the balance sheet of Citibank in 2008 was about $1 trillion. Dollars. And in 2007, it was almost $1.3 trillion. So to regulators, is it safe for depositors that a bank has a deposit of $775 billion and loans and trading assets was over a trillion dollars? What are regulators doing? How did regulators prepare themselves for this kind of crisis, what I call a rainy day, the day it begins to rain? How have you built an umbrella to ensure that depositors don't face the risk of losing their deposits? I think that must be a lesson to regulators globally. Nigeria is a rich nation of green land, rich resources, countless crops and commodities sufficient to feed and provide a means of livelihood for her teeming population. Chin up Nigeria, the giant of Africa, exciting times are here. We can be self-reliant and grow our economy if we work together to explore our potential. It takes a whole nation. Let us get involved. Buy Nigerian to grow Nigeria. That's all we have from the CBN this week. Report on resolved banking issues to the CBN Consumer Protection Department using the email cpd at cbn.gov.ng attached relevant documents. Call the CBN Contact Center on the phone line plus 234-700-2255-226. Local call rates may apply. Write to us through the email address from the CBN at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter for updates and to watch uploaded episodes of the program. We invite you to join us again next time. I'm William Misidada. Stay safe. Bye for now.